At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white hexproof deck featuring Paradise Druid from War of the Spark. I get a lot of requests for more budget-friendly decks, and this is definitely one of them since outside of the rare dual lands and two copies of Ajani, the entire deck is commons and uncommons, and even the dual lands and Ajani you can potentially leave out and still retain most of the deck's power level. So let's jump right into it here. We're playing the full four copies of Paradise Druid as a 2-mana two 2-1 two creature that has hexproof as long as it's untapped, and we can also use it as a mana creature tapping it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So the idea behind the deck is that we're playing Paradise Druid alongside a bunch of Vigilance granting enchantments, like Sentinel's Mark, 2 mana enchantment that we can play at instant speed thanks to Flash, and the enchanted creature gets plus 1 plus 2 and has Vigilance, and if we played this during our main phase the creature also gains a lifelink until end of turn, so if we enchant or Paradise Druid with a Sentinel's Mark, it will become a 3-3 with Vigilance, which means that we can attack and still keep Hexproof on Paradise Druid to protect it from any spot removal spells from the opponent, and then we can start loading even more enchantments onto it, and then the other Vigilance granting enchantment in our deck is on Sarah's Wings, giving the enchanted creature plus plus one plus one, flying, vigilance and lifelink, and also turns it into a legendary creature, and on Sarah's Wings is also legendary itself, so we can't have more than one copy in play at the same time, so this is a very powerful enchantment to put on our Paradise Druid, so we can fly over, gain life, and make sure our Paradise Druid keeps hexproof. So outside of Paradise Druid we also have four copies of Adanto Vanguard, two mana for a 1-1 one, one that has plus two plus O as long as it's attacking, so attacks as a 3-1, and we can pay for life to make Adanto Vanguard indestructible until end of turn, so we can save it from any damage based removal spells or any destroy effects. It's not gonna save it from any minus X minus X effects, and it's not gonna save it from exile based removal, but still covers a lot of potential answers. And then the final two drop in the deck is Bond of Flourishing, two mana for a sorcery, that lets us look at the top three cards of our library, we can reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand. Rest goes on the bottom and we also gain 3 life, so this finds every card in the deck outside of other copies of Bond of Flourishing, so this can help us find creatures if we already have enchantments, can help us find enchantments if we already have creatures, or find lands if we need to hit our land drop. So very versatile card. And next up we've got the full 4 copies of Seder Enchanter, 3 mana for a 2-2 creature that says whenever we cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. So this is a very powerful card draw engine that's usually going to eat a removal spell right away, but if it happens to survive, it can draw us a lot of extra cards. And then we also have the full 4 copies of Prison Realm, which is our main removal spell in the deck, exiling a creature or planeswalker from the opponent, and also letting us scry one. And of course it's an enchantment that we can find with Bond of Flourishing, and draws us a card with Seder Enchanter as well. So great in this deck. And then we have 4 copies of Squires of Ocean, 3 mana for an enchantment, giving our creature plus 1 plus 1, and lifelink. And when the Devotion enters the battlefield, we also get to make a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink, that can maybe help us chum block or protect us from a sacrifice effect like the new Angrass Rampage or an Eldest Reborn, and save our hexproof creatures that way. So very useful alongside Adanto Vanguard, since if we can give Adanto Vanguard lifelink and plus 1 plus 1, it's going to be a very formidable threat even against something like Monorad, where we would usually not like to pay for life to make Adanto Vanguard indestructible, but if we give it lifelink it's not so bad. And then to top of our curve we've got the full 4 copies of Vinemare, 4 mana for a 5-3 with hexproof, that cannot be blocked by black creatures, so this helps us survive potential sweeper effects like Cry of the Carnarium, as soon as we give it plus 1 plus 1 it also dodges Deafening Clarion, it survives Ritual of Soot at 4 mana, so it dodges a lot of the potential removal spells our opponents can have, still dies to Kaya's Wrath, so that's one of the weaknesses of Vinemare, but if we're facing a blue-black control deck for example where they only have Ritual of Soot, then the Vine Mare is very difficult to deal with once it resolves. And then we have the full four copies of Onsara's Wings, which is our most powerful enchantment. And finally, two copies of Ajani, Adversary of Tyrants, which may seem a little weird in this deck, but it fills a multitude of roles. The minus two can help us get back a two drop after recovering from a sweeper effect, so we have an additional threat to then put the plus one plus one counters onto with the plus one ability. And if there's kind of a board stall, the plus one ability alongside maybe a lifelink enchantment can make it very difficult for the opponent to outrace us and can start growing our hexproof threat bigger and bigger until we maybe reach the ultimate, which can also be game winning. And we could also be playing the new Ajani, which grants Vigilance, and uses the minus two to put plus one plus one counters on our creatures. The Vigilance is of course nice alongside Paradise Druid, as another way to keep Hexproof and be able to attack with Paradise Druid. But I found that the uh, Ajani Adversary of Tyrants is a little bit more flexible, and gives us more tools to work with. 
And then the mana base is very straightforward, 7 planes, 7 forests, the full 4 copies of Sunpel Grove and the full 4 copies of Temple Garden. You could even get away with playing some tapped guild gates for example, instead of some of these dual lands if you don't have them, since as you can see it's not like we're doing much on turn 1 anyway, so playing a tapped guild gate on turn 1 is fine, it's just that in the later turns you might get punished for having a guild gate instead. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Looks decent. Let's do this. So, I think we're just gonna give our druid flying. I'm fine if the enchanter trades at this point. Up against elves. Ooh, Nissa. Nissa scary. Serpon gets to make all the mana. And I think I'll play a Vanguard. So your opponent's got quite a bit of mana to work with. Beast Whisper would be bad, potentially. Ooh, finale of Devastation. For three. Evolution Sage. Alright, it's pretty scary. It's a pretty interesting take on the elf deck here with more proliferate synergies. Escape shift, nice. Don't think I've ever seen the escape shift animation yet on Arena. Alright, resolve all. Alright. Are we dead now? Opponent's definitely going off. <laughs> nice. Alright. Well, they figured out a way how to cast the Forerunners. Gets in for 7. Uh, blocking doesn't really help since it tramples. Alright, uh, let's go digging, I guess. Prison Realm looks good. So what are we exiling? The Nyssa or the Forerunners? Probably the Forerunners, and now we can just attack Nyssa. Or the Marwyn, it's pretty scary too. I think we get rid of the Forerunners though. Don't need more lands. And we can even play the Sentinel's Mark if we wanted to after attacking. Just send all of Nyssa. Could maybe go face as well and ignore Nyssa. With their Evolution Sage in play they could maybe ultimate Nyssa. So Nyssa's dying. And we can save the Seder Enchanter. And I doubt our opponent has removal spells, so I think we're okay tapping the Druid. Okay. 
So they still have a pretty big Marwin in play, two cards in hand. Back of Nissa. Fair enough. So what are we hoping to draw? More Prison Realms, more on... I guess on Sarah's Wings is legendary, so we can't have more than one in play. Sentinel's Mark's not bad. I guess we can main phase this on... probably the Paradise Druid. Although that already has lifelink, so maybe just put it on the Vanguard instead. Squires of Ocean, probably just playing the Vine Mare though. This seems fine. Nissa down. And next turn we get to make a lifelinking horse. And without the Nissa in play, it's a lot less scary what they can do here. Nissa's Triumph gets two lands. Well, our opponent managed to pull off their combo, but it wasn't quite good enough here. Evolution stage is not bad here with all those forests in play, with counters on them. Vanguard basically means we only take 4 from Marwin instead of 9. Alright, sweet. Uh, sure. Ooh, against a red deck. Sentinel's Mark. Could be nice. Steamkin. Alright, well, if we play the Enchanter, it's gonna die. I kinda wanna get uh, Druid up to more than one toughness in case of a Chain Warder. So I think I'm just gonna Sentinel's Mark and then we can kind of figure it out from there, I guess. So we gain three. Could tap out for another Paradise Druid, but then the first one's exposed. I think I'm just gonna pass. So, we know there's a shock incoming. Ooh, on Sarah's Wings was probably their best draw. Could also Prison Realm the Steamkin right now. It's probably not a bad idea. And then just wait for the Sarah's Wings one turn. I guess it's worth it. It's not very mana efficient, but Steamkin's still pretty scary. Yeah, I'll keep uh, gain three here. opponent just concedes. Fair enough. Well, we were gonna smash them pretty badly once we played on Sarah's Wings. Our deck can definitely line up awkwardly against a red deck if they are on the play in a Chain Warlord or a Druid that we play on turn 2. Then we're gonna be sad, but if we're on the play and we can put the Druid up to more than one toughness and then slap a non Sarah's Wings on it, the red deck's gonna struggle. Crime of the Carnarium and Ritual of Soot are kind of the major problems here. And there's not much we can do about either one. I guess we're just playing a Seder Enchanter Sango. What we really want to draw in this matchup is Vinemare. I don't think our opponent can beat Vinemare if it resolves. So we can dig for it with the bond, but then we're not doing anything else. Let's just play Seder. Right, if they're just gonna kill Enchanter, that's probably a sign they don't have a sweeper.
All right, so we could go for the Onsera's Wings on Druid. They didn't seem to have a counter spell last turn. They might cast the Chemistry's Inside here. Let's try it. All right, so we're gonna see nothing. Weird. I thought they would at least have a Chemistry's. Well, that's too bad. I guess we're digging with bonds. Is this a negate? Well, a Johnny's not bad. Usually don't expect to see a Liliana's Triumph now. Also Ritual of Soot, well... I'm glad we fought through those. Nothing to get back with the Jani, but it's the only play. And now they negate. Alright. So they kind of had all the answers here. If we top deck a Vinemar at any point and resolve it, it's pretty much game. Well, I'm not gonna cast Prison Realm just for the scry. Alright. Let's see what happens. Don't think this is resolving. Could have tried to keep it in hand and then wait until we can bait out the counter spell somehow, but then we also risk Thought Erasure just taking away the Fine Mare instead. Needed a Vine Mare right now. Guess we'll go with the Prison Realm. Well, now we need two more creatures. There's one. Hmm. My mind needs a rest. Needed to be one card deeper in our deck. Well, it's gonna be tricky to get past this Sabotage now. And now that you know about Vine Mare, they're never gonna tap out of sabotage mana. Main phase chemistries. Bone says go. Well, now that we know about the sabotage, I don't think I can run out of Vinemare. Even though there's again the risk of Thought Erasures. Yep. I don't think we can beat that. I guess the new Liliana is pretty effective against her deck too if we don't have a bunch of creatures in play to sacrifice. Uh, sure. Not a blue-black deck. The sand would have been pretty good against Monored. Alright, at least we got our Druid in play. All right, there's a vine mare. That's what we want. I don't think I uh, tap the druid for mana. All right, so we get to resolve our vine mare here. So even have a backup. So let's see how they deal with five three hexproof with convert mana cost four and more than two toughness. I guess we'll play another one. Sure. Opponent's just desperate to surveil here. Not sure what they're working towards. Bonus scoops it up. Well, we kind of saw how uh, polarizing the matchup can be. If we can stick a Vinemare, then uh, things are pretty difficult for the blue-black deck. 
But uh, yeah, if they draw the the right sweepers and counter spells and hand disruption spells, then they can make life difficult for us. Hmm. So creatureless hands, but we do have a bond of flourishing to go digging. I think I'm tempted to keep. We've got good mana, some solid enchantments, and if we find a paradise druid, we can give it vigilance right away. I think we want a druid here. They could still Conclave Tribunal to exile our enchantments, but we've got multiples. Martyr of Dusk. Alright. I think we're just gonna go with the Onsara's Wings. Next turn we can play two enchantments. Bodyguard. Is this a Loxodon turn? Or Tribunal or Sarah's Wings. Alright, that's all of Power and Toughness. How close are they to the City's Blessing? They're currently at 8. So they don't need much more. Well, all we can do is play some enchantments here. So I guess we'll do that. Could also keep the Sentinel's Mark to grow our soldier token here, or vampire. Opponents at 17, so if we hit them for 4, they're at 13. If we hit them for 5, they're at 12. And then 6 makes it a 2 turn clock. So I guess maybe we should still Sentinel's Mark the Druid. So we don't want to see any life game, we don't want to see any Conclave Tribunals. History's fine. Although that does give them the City's Blessing. Yeah, as long as we keep our on Sarah's Wings, we should be good. Doesn't matter which one we block. Guess we'll block there. Can keep our Vampire token around for now. If our opponent has like a baffling end, it could be worth it to chump now before they get the chance to use it. Don't see that card very often though. Let's just go for it. We also kind of flooded out in the meantime. Didn't draw many spells. But if we were lucky to find a creature with our Bond of Flourishing, otherwise we would have been in trouble. So even a Pride of Conquerors doesn't kill our Paradise Root if we block here. But now I'm definitely gonna chum block so we don't die to something random. Alright. Let's get in there. Couldn't play the Martyr of Dusk, which is maybe not an optimal card in the deck, but the alternative would have been a Tithe Taker. It's not like a Tithe Taker would have made a huge difference in that game. And they still went with a pretty strong Lockstone turn afterwards, so they had a competitive draw, but the Hexproof deck was able to live through it thanks to all the life gain. The Flying is definitely very important in that matchup, because without it, we're going to have a hard time breaking through. 
All right, so this sounds pretty weak if our enchanter dies and if we don't draw any hexproof creatures in the meantime. I think I'm gonna keep, but I don't expect this to go well. So maybe that means we should mulligan. We're gonna have our thoughts erased. Enchant her down. That was a good draw. Although against blue-black it still dies to... Frasca's Contempt and Moment of Craving, although Moment of Craving might be replaced by Tyrant's Corn. Also still dies to Crime the Carnarium if it's one toughness. So we probably don't want to play the Seder Enchanter. I could see playing the Sentinel's Mark to get it out of Crime the Carnarium range. Alright, so the card we're most worried about now is a Vraska's Contempt exiling the Vanguard. Alright, Thought Erasure might take the other Enchanter. Takes the Squire's Devotion instead, interesting. I guess they don't want us to make the Vanguard bigger, which kind of implies they don't have a Vraska's Contempt, otherwise they wouldn't mind. But uh, we'll just attack and play an enchanter now, I think. Ritual of Soot and Cry don't answer the Vanguard anymore. Alright, GG's. So turn to Vanguard and no Frasca's Contempts. So we were able to get there. This is a pretty decent hand. Let's play our druid. Just guy. There's a lot of control decks in uh, this game mode apparently. Alright, let's uh, hope to resolve a Vinemare. Does still die to Clarion. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Alright. I guess we can go Bond plus Vanguard. Johnny's not bad. We can just attack and do nothing. Opponent didn't even take two, so they don't have a Chemist's Insight end of turn here, so they're probably keeping up an Absorb. And if they Cleansing Nova on five, we can untap and play an Ajani and get back something from the graveyard like the Adanto Vanguard. If we play Ajani now, get it countered and a Cleansing Nova, then we don't have a great follow-up. And if we play the Seder Enchanter, it should just die to the Cleansing Nova anyway. So I think we just attack. And pass the turn here. Could play the Seder Enchanter to kind of force them to have the Cleansing Nova on 5. Don't know if that's necessary. Yeah, they're just gonna keep up their interaction. So, yeah, I'm just gonna attack again. And if they want to settle us, they can settle us. Just a strike. Alright, I guess now I can play the Seder Enchanter. And it's fine if this gets countered. So now they're gonna pull the trigger on the Cleansing Nova. But they can't counter the Ajani. If we wait one more turn, we risk 
the opponent going Cleansing Nova plus Negator Dovin's Veto. Alright, never miss it. I guess that works. Can just Prison Realm it though. Not a Vine Mare. It's not bad. It's not like we really need a fifth land. Sure. And if their play next turn is another Nif, they're just dead. Alright, well. We dodged uh, Deafening Clarion at 3 mana. And then they didn't really have an answer for the Vine Mare. Sweet, so yeah, the green white hexproof deck. I think I'm pretty happy with the current configuration. Got a good mix of threats and then enchantments to boost up our creatures on Sarah's Wings, definitely being one of the more important ones. And then Ajani gives us a bit of recursion, getting back Adanto Vanguard and Druid, and can also kind of boost up our creatures with E plus one, making them larger, which is kind of an effect we needed. Could maybe see something like Oakenform being good in this deck as well, just to have more beef. But uh, it's very important that we have the Vigilance enchantments first with Sentinel's Mark or Osiris Wings. So there's not much room for other enchantments. I guess we could maybe shave some of the Squire's Devotions for some Oakenforms, maybe go with a 2-2 two two split. But Squire's Devotion alongside Vanguard's great against any aggressive deck. That's gonna do it for today, but for now I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.